In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, at the beginning of this Mass, let us lay down our intentions before the altar of the Lord, and let us pray together as one community, knowing that the Lord is merciful and just. I confess to Almighty God and to you, to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation and nothing is holy, Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, 
These are the festivals of the Lord which you shall celebrate at their proper time with a sacred assembly. The Passover of the Lord falls on the 14th day of the first month at the evening twilight. The 15th day of this month is the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first of these days you shall hold a sacred assembly and do no sort of work. On each of the seven days you shall offer an oblation to the Lord. Then on the seventh day, you shall again hold a sacred assembly and do no sort of work. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, When you come into the land which I am giving you and reap your harvest, you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest who shall wave the sheaf before the Lord that it may be acceptable for you. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall do this. Beginning with the day after the Sabbath, the day on which you bring the wave offering sheaf, you shall count seven full weeks, and on the day after the seventh week, the fiftieth day, you shall present the new cereal offering to the Lord. The tenth of the seventh month is the day of atonement, when you shall hold a sacred assembly and mortify yourselves, and offer an oblation to the Lord. The fifteenth day of the seventh month is the Lord's Feast of Boots, which shall continue for seven days. On the first day, there shall be a sacred assembly, and you shall do no sort of work. For seven days you shall offer an oblation to the Lord, and on the eighth day you shall again hold a sacred assembly and offer an oblation to the Lord. On that solemn closing, we shall do no sort of work. These, therefore, are the festivals of the Lord, on which you shall proclaim a sacred assembly and offer an, as an oblation to the Lord burnt offerings and cereal offerings, sacrifices and libations as prescribed for each day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing with joy to God our help. Sing with joy to God our help. Take up a melody and sound the timbrel, the pleasant harp and the lyre. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our solemn feast. Sing with joy to God our help. For it is a statute in Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob, who made it a decree for Joseph when he came forth from the land of Egypt. Sing with joy to God our help. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. Sing with joy to God our help. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that's, that has been proclaimed to you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Upon reading this episode in the life of Jesus, 
honestly, I could not really relate. Normally, there is such a thing as a hometown pride. For example, if uh, somebody in sports performs well, and then when that person returns to the hometown, normally there will be a festive, a, a, a good celebration, lots of festivities, lots of warm welcome. Uh, when a newly ordained priest, for example, returns to his hometown to celebrate a Thanksgiving Mass, as it happened in my case, there is normally a warm reception and uh, some kind of even applause that this hometown was able to produce uh, like a priest. Mga iba pa nga, may, amb may ano, ambulance, fire truck, etc. No? <laughs> so, um, so this uh, idea of why was not Jesus you know, uh, recognized as the hometown pride? Oh, we have a prophet that comes from Nazareth. Isn't that good? I suppose there's a background to this, and the background here is that it's the suddenness of the shift in the identity of Jesus from a quiet, private citizen in Nazareth without any indications uh, whatsoever that he has some spiritual genius within him, uh, suddenly becomes a self-proclaimed, self-made, and a self-taught prophet. It is not as if Jesus studied under a recognized school uh, during his time. He just, uh, out of nowhere, suddenly proclaimed himself as prophet. And therefore, it is understandable, this, uh, the reaction of his native, uh, his hometown people. They were astonished. And the Greek word for astonished is uh, something is uh, best translated in English as knocked out of one senses, so that you, you end up like gaping in the mouth and saying, Who is this? what's happening? Okay, uh, there's a certain uh, shock to it. And from that shock, it elevates into taking offense. And the, the Greek word for this, again, is uh, related to the word scandal. Uh, in other words, Jesus becomes an aberration, uh, like a protrusion in the ground, uh, uh, which you trip, and there's an offense. And so what is the, perhaps the lesson for all of us uh, today? I think it is uh, faith opens, we need to have that openness, openness in order to um, allow faith to generate possibilities. And I go back to the baptism of Jesus when in the Gospel of Matthew, same Gospel today, the heavens were opened. And that is the beginning of faith when our hearts opens up to whatever revelation God gives before us. Uh, so let us be aware of perhaps the means by which God uses to communicate His grace to us. It can be an unlikely means. It can be, for example, a prisoner convicted of a crime but uh, has some uh, conversion within him. God can speak through that. It can speak through the most ordinary worker without an educa education. God can speak through the poorest performing student in class. So we have to have this openness within us so that through this openness, we can learn to have faith and allow God's mighty deeds to work in our lives. Jesus was rejected by his own people. In faith, we accept him as our Lord and Savior. He responds, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may speak the word of God with courage and live it with conviction, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we may be strengthened to proclaim zealously and fearlessly the gospel message in our homes and neighborhood, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That missionaries may be patient and not lose heart in sowing the message of God to unwelcoming places, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents of handicapped children, those who care for the aged, and all those who are suffering at home or in the hospital may bear silent witness to the love of God, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That God may comfort those who are mourning over the death of their loved ones, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those celebrating their birthdays, especially Narcisa Escaler, Boy Boy Reyes, and Francie Pascual, we pray. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For the healing of Pitts Hezon, Richard Gordon, Denise De Jesus, Jose Marisimo, Malin Lorayes, Linda and Ted Ferrer, Emily Quaso, Alan Matutina, and Lin Linda Docdosil, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Florinda Borromeo, Corazon Montinola Lu, Proceso Maligalig, Father Luis Candelaria, Raul Obia Serrano, and Rolando Dorero, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the special intentions of Lisi Ann Puno, Bobby and Maritela Lavinia, SPO1 Ricky Ocampo, Grade 6 Parents Orientation of the Ateneo Grade School, Susilu, Maricar, and Marijo, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages at JESCOM and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we call on you with confidence to hear the prayers of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life, and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now approach God for our novena prayer for the Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Our theme, Finding God in All Things. Ignatian Insight. The spiritual path of St. Ignatius expressed in the exercises culminates in the conviction that it is possible to seek and find God in all things. We are helped to enter into contact with God, our Creator, who communicates himself directly with his creatures and who invites us to live in relationship with him. In following Christ, contemplating his life, we discover that the Lord incarnates and makes himself present in poverty and in forced displacement from Bethlehem, in day-to-day -day work in Nazareth, in the byways of Galilee and in the city of Jerusalem, in the solitude of prayer and in sharing with the disciples in teaching and serving the multitudes, in death on the cross and descent into the netherworld, in the joy and consolation of the resurrection. It is possible to find God in all things because he is in all things. God gives and gives himself. God is and God works. God descends. God loves always. Let us pray. God, our Father, you are always near us in stillness and in action, alone or with others, in the familiar and in the strange. May we always be aware of your holy presence so that we can boldly seek and find you in all things. Amen. Let us now ask the Lord's blessing upon us and upon our loved ones and those we keep in prayer for today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
compassion, kawal ni Kristo, tanggulan na bansa mapanilong tukso. Ang bansa. 